Before I tell you what you just saw, I'd like to give you a little uh, history lesson. Um, Germany, in the, uh, during the Cold War, it was split in half. There was an East Germany and a West Germany. And uh, most people, when they think of cars or German cars, you, know, you would probably say mm, Mercedes or BMW or some kind of expensive high-end car. But uh, there's also a, a car called a Trabant. And uh, this is what it looks like right here. Um, I also have a nice picture of it. And there you go. Gives you a good example of what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of some uh, a lot of things that are uh, unique about the car, and uh, that's what I really want to talk about. Get you to know what the what the car is about. Uh, is, First of all, I'd like to talk about the motor. Um, the motor, it has uh, two cylinders, and uh, it makes it a very weak car. It's only 18 horsepower. So if you, uh, <laughs> if you can compare that to a car that you normally drive, uh, yeah, it's not uh, very powerful. As uh, a matter of fact, the top speed is about 70 miles per hour. And, um, Actually, you can make it go faster, but that entails maybe driving it off a cliff, so <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, the 21 uh, seconds to, uh, for it to go from 0 to 62 miles per hour. So, again, compared to cars that we're used to driving, um, not a very uh, fast or powerful car. Uh, but also, uh, it's good on gas mileage because it only has two cylinders, so it gets 35 miles per gallon. And uh, since, um, well, the motor is, is also kind of dirty. <laughs> so uh, it actually has nine times the amount of fluorocarbons and five times the amount of uh, carbon monoxide than a, a regular 2007 European automobile. So it's uh, pretty bad on pollution. As a matter of fact, um, they, Dan Neal, he's the... Uh, Pulitzer Prize winning automotive critic, and uh, he said Trabant smoke like an Iraqi oil field, <laughs> as if they run it all. So you can just imagine, it's not an exaggeration, they, it smokes all over the place. Um, now as far as uh, maintaining the motor, uh, it's an air-cooled motor, so you don't really need uh, uh, a radiator or anything. it's just air-cooled, much like a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, the thing is, it, it also requires the oil to be mixed in with the gasoline. So you don't need oil changes, but uh, you, you do have to add, um, it's, it's a ratio of 33 to 1. So for every 33 uh, parts of gas, you need one uh, part of oil. And that's really why it smokes up so much, because it's burning oil all the time. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that, that was the motor. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the body itself. Um, let's see. That's a typical uh, Trabant body. Uh, they're made out of duroplast, which is uh, it's a type of resin, and uh, it's strengthened by wool or cotton. So it's uh, almost like a <laughs> like a plastic. It doesn't rust, so <laughs> it almost lasts forever. This particular car was built in 1960, and there's no rust on it at all. So you know, it looks just like almost the day it was built. Um, there were uh, three different models built. From uh, 1957 to 1962, it was called the uh, Model 500. Um, this one that we're looking at is the, uh, it's called a deluxe model. <laughs> it's the uh, 601, which was built between 1963 and 1991. And uh, after the Cold War, they actually tried to keep, keep it in production for a while, and it was called a 1.1, and they actually took a Volkswagen motor and put it in, so it make it cleaner. <laughs> But it's, it only lasted a few years after that, so um, basically that's what's, what's going on with that. Um, okay, uh, as far as uh, safety equipment in the car, really doesn't have any. <laughs> 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 uh, there's no 
airbags, there's no safety glass, um, there's just, uh, there's no seat belts, of course. So, uh, no, it's, so if you, you know, if you're driving one of these things, it's almost like a suicide machine. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, it doesn't even have a gas gauge, so, uh, you know, uh, you'd actually, if you, if you want to know how much gas you have, you have to actually go in with a dipstick and uh, try to figure out how much gas you have. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's another nice feature of the car. <laughs> um, and uh, lastly, I also want to talk about the car in general, um, how, how people, why they wanted to even own one of these things. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in communist uh, Germany, I mean, you were lucky to even have a car. And this was the only brand you could buy. So, uh, you know, if, if for example, uh, you know, you wanted a car, you'd go down to the dealer and you'd order one, and it would take maybe 10 to 15 years to get one. <laughs> so, uh, and you were just happy to get, you couldn't pick the color or anything, you just were happy to have the car and, you know, if it ran, it would be even better. So, <laughs> it's, a, and uh, the reason why I bring all this stuff is because a lot of Americans, they take their cars for granted. And, uh, you know, this, this might help someone actually appreciate what they're driving now as compared to a <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Oh, Andy, if you could...